Good morning and welcome to Winnipeg. Now, before we get going here on the uh, model, I just want to give you a bit of an update on the sound that I'm trying to be able to record when I'm on my bike rides. And uh, there might be some of you who are interested. Now, later yesterday afternoon, I thought I had solved my problem. You know this this thing that I that I wear here on my chest. Well, I thought if I was to fasten uh, sort of a little part on it here, that I could put my recorder on. Well, yeah, my my body would absorb the this this the uh, vibration that comes up through the bike, and uh, but then I realized that. I'm, I'm defeating the purpose of having this extra part here because I would have this extra mass bouncing up and down, you know, which is going to increase the, you know, and I think you get the idea. In other words, the video would be a little bit more bouncy and that's what we were trying to get away from and, and we pretty much solved it. Yeah, we pretty much solved it. Because uh, this thing is pretty heavy, okay? Now, I've also got another microphone here. You may have seen me use this, well, maybe two, three years ago. And this one is shock mounted. If, if, you, if you will notice, the, the uh, microphone is independent, sort of, of the, the, the bracket that, what, that you would fasten it onto your camera. This is actually designed to go in, into the hot shoe of a camera. I bought this years ago when I first had my uh, uh, D800 which would not record in stereo through the camera. So I was using this on the camera and a cord running to a, a, a device similar to this. And I was recording my sound and dubbing it in and trying to get extra good sound. And, and it actually was it actually was quite good. Uh, but anyway, so, so this could maybe even be mounted on the handlebars. And then, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm pretty sure it would work. I could plug it into the the input on, on this thing here and uh, record it that way and you know, have a bit of an extension cord but then I've got I've got an extra device you know I've got to carry this in, a, in my pocket somewhere and and it just probably wouldn't go in my shirt pocket anymore because the straps for, for, the, for this thing are going to be around my chest okay now uh, so we're, we're sort of back to this Kind of. At least I think I think that's what we're going to do. Now, if we're back to this, how would it be if I if I made up a separate a separate uh, holder that would fasten just underneath this one? It'd go around it'd go around around my lower waist sort of, um, and then I could fasten <clears throat> you know this on here, and uh, it, it wouldn't it would be completely independent from this, but but the Oh, I've got my scale here because I haven't weighed it yet, but I want to see what is the difference between the weight of this and the weight of this. Because this could go actually anywhere. It could even be fastened onto the bike somehow with duct tape. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're in grams. You probably can't read that, so you have to take my word for it. Okay, that weighs uh, 338 grams, 37 grams, 337. And this is 158. So this is, this is only half the weight of this. Uh, yeah, less than half the weight. Okay, uh, so uh, I don't know, maybe... Maybe I'll, I'll do that. Maybe I'll rig up a, a bracket that will go onto the, say, the handlebars of the bike and it sort of aim forward. Now, then I run into another problem. <clears throat> the camera will, this will probably block the view of the camera. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it could be that I'm uh, trying to do something that's, you know, and at the end of the day, who cares? <laughs> Well, I sort of do. I, I, you know, sound and video and stuff like that, that's sort of my thing. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a saying that's, uh, uh, 
somebody once said that the, the sound in a, in, a, in a video or in a movie uh, it isn't isn't half the uh, half the movie it's all of the movie <laughs> or something to that effect you know and sound does really make a difference if you can get that good quality stereo sound that gives you the the uh, the atmosphere of what's happening around you um, well, those of you who are into sound you know exactly what I'm talking about okay let's uh, get on here today and uh, we're, we're almost at the end of step 37. We're almost at the end of step 37. And I, I'm noticing that there's a, a couple of more steps we have to go before we get to the place where Trumpeter wants us to drop our uh, catwalk down on the top. So let's just, let's just hold off on that. I was going to put it on to see how it looked, but uh, why risk bending it and scratching up the other part and if I don't have to? <clears throat> so I'm going to try and do everything in in the order basically that the manual calls for uh, at least that's the plan I, I know that occasionally I will uh, look ahead and do something and or I will, I'll take somebody will suggest you better do this particular thing now because you're going to get yourself boxed in later uh, yeah and I, I think this I think there is something that I did I made a bit of a mistake uh, Oh, uh, somebody reminded me we got to paint the uh, the deck surface, the the 77, the, this top that I'm touching right now. So uh, maybe I maybe I better go ahead and do that before I get too uh, uh, too far along here and get stuff down that's going to sort of be in my way. All right, enough chatter here. Let's get this audio stuff off the table and uh, get our plastic parts where we can get at them yeah okay now before I put a little piece of masking tape along the edge here and the same on the other side so that I don't get the 77 down the sides at least that's the plan uh, I think what I should do is take the uh, NATO black here and just touch up where the uh, uh, CA glue or the uh, the glinting is gone rather from the uh, extra thin so uh, I shook this up a few minutes ago here all, all we want to do is just get rid of this I think it's just going to poke it around the, the base like that and we'll do the same around the other one I think once this dries it should blend right in. Now let's try not to get, accidentally touch it where we're not supposed to. Okay, and I was noticing it right along in here. It looked like we could probably put a little bit more. I think once that dries we won't notice it quite as bad. Okay, now if you recall that we had a fiasco with this small one yesterday. Let's just touch it up very carefully here now. Try not to get it up on the on the, uh, what is this, 19? Whoops. And I I think I more or less got it. I know, I know it really shows up now, but that's Oh, look what I just did. Look what I just did. Ugh. Oh. Should I cut that out? Why don't I just, you know what? I should just paint over that and cut this scene out. <sighs> but I won't. Oh, for heaven's sakes. And then to make matters even worse, what do I do? I stick the macro lens on and really show it to you. I must have this need to confess or something. Trying to get away with just having just one coat, and I think that I think that's probably going to evaporate, evaporate down, and it's going to blend in pretty good. Okay, well, let's leave well enough alone here. Now I do believe. Just let me check. I'm going to recompose here. 
Now I do believe that I've got a little bit of black right, right under here. Let's turn this so I can get at it just a little better. Okay, not that anybody would notice it, but I know it's there. Okay. You know what? I think we're ready to put the uh, cap on the smokestack. Yeah. I said smokestack. I want uh, Ryan to be proud of me. Okay. A little fluffy or something right there. At least I hope that's what it is. <laughs> no, it's... I don't know if you can see it. What, what is that? Where's my little brush? Yeah, I'm hoping it's a piece of dust. I don't have to repaint here. Oh yeah, it was, a, it was a piece of dust. Okay. Now we gotta put the uh, we gotta put it the wrong way so it'll match the other one. I think this is it. So let me move in a little bit here. Okay. Try and keep my head out of the light. Like that, get it square. Um, let me check the manual here. No, if I want it the wrong way, it has to go this way. Okay, now it'll match the other one. You know, <clears throat> I'm gonna just press stop here and just go and take a look at the other one and make sure that I'm getting them the same. Otherwise, <laughs> you know, it's really gonna be noticeable. Yep, yeah, I got it right. Might not be square though. Now, how am I going to glue it down? Okay, so we want it to go that way. I'm thinking that maybe if I was to take a little bit of uh, of the Tamiya thick and just just go around the edge there, it does, the the whole thing doesn't have to be glued in place; just part of it. So let's just. Put this thing down. Okay, now. Now I don't want to get it smeared up over, you know, onto the 19 here. Okay, now I'm going to have to turn this a little bit, and I'm going to probably block your vision. Okay, now just let me look at this straight on so I can get it straight. Now did I do it right? Okay, I did it wrong, which means I've done it right. All right, I think that's gonna, I think that's gonna be okay. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm noticing a little bit of glinting going on down there at the base of those small, those three small pipes. Did I not, or maybe the paint's not quite dry yet. Now I've been having so much fun here that I didn't realize that it's already 32.4 outside in the shade. And inside the house here it's already pushing 26 degrees. So if I'm smart I'm going to get my windows shut and my AC turned on. Otherwise in another couple of hours it's going to be pretty warm in here.
Okay, Matt, this is the first time I'm trying your uh, idea. Seems to work really well. Problem is, I don't work very well. Okay. Now I don't want this. What do we got on here? A little hair. No, it's not from me. All my hairs fall out. Okay. I don't want this to be too high. I just want it just to go along like this. This is this is just gonna help. Maybe that's too low. But like that. Whoops. Well let's get this end right and then we'll I'll lift the other end up. i to be able to put a little bit of pressure on it. How is that? No, that's not straight. That is not straight. I wonder if maybe if I should maybe be laying this down on its side. Okay, can I do that without breaking anything? Might be a little... Yeah, I could do it like this. And sort of face it towards me. Okay, let's let's sort of recompose here. Okay, let's uh, try this again. This might actually work better. I'll move you in a little bit. Yeah, I think that's better. Now, how does that look? Are we too low, maybe? Maybe we're too low. Let's just raise it up a little bit on this end here. Guess I'm going to have to take it right off. Well, that's a little bit higher than I had wanted it, but uh, I, I'll, I'm still going to plan. I still plan on being careful with my brush. 
Okay, let's do the other side. All right, that will help. It's, an, it's no guarantee, but it will help. Maybe I should try and poke it in right here where this little bit of a crack is around the splinter wall. Let's use my finger now. Okay. All right, where's our 77? Now our sunrise this morning was even worse than yesterday mornings. However, when you stop to think about it, all we've got is smoke in the air. There are people here in Canada who are losing their homes. Uh, whole little communities are having to evacuate and they're living in fear. Are they going to come back to ashes or are they going to come back to uh, water still in the fishbowl? Uh, yeah. Now, I have a faint recollection of somebody recommending that I paint this deck before I put this smokestack part on. Okay, let's cool it with the smokestack stuff. This is the only 77 I've got, and it's thinned out for the airbrush. Now, I know it's only about a 12-minute drive, if I get the lights right, to the hobby store. And uh, I could go and buy some more. Gotta, i got to get a bunch of paint anyway. Okay, now the plan is to try not to, not to touch. Just to sort of get it underneath there. I am going to do two, maybe three coats. So we'll just try and put it on kind of light. And, uh... Maybe I should zoom in a bit, huh? I'm gonna have to turn this away from me a bit so that I can I can see to get in there. I could probably maybe be using a smaller brush. Okay. I might have to do the rest of this off camera. Okay, now, where the splinter rail is, I'm just going to go around all the hard parts first. I just want to go just up to it. Oh, you know what? I touched it there, didn't I? second coat will make it a lot better. There's no question about that. Okay, you know what? I'm going to do the rest of this off camera because I'm going to have to want to twist it around and you're not going to be able to see it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get that where it's really a little bit too thin. We'll get that with the second or the third coat. And, and places like like in here where the funnel where I'm just almost touching it right now I'm going to use a really tiny brush to get in there but I want to do this off camera so I can do a reasonably good job now there is obviously going to be some sort of part go on right here and so we don't need to paint the inside of this 
Okay, we'll see, we'll see you back when I get the first coat done. Now, I was finding that that tape that I put on was actually more of a hindrance than a help. And I was finding that I, if I removed the tape, I could just sort of drag my brush off the edge, you know, like this. And that seemed to work pretty good. Anyway, we've got our first coat is on. Now, I think I'm going to call it quits for this afternoon. There's uh, other stuff that I want to do yet. And uh, I know it's only barely after two and there is time to do a little bit more, I guess. But, uh, uh, oh, one, one thing I did do was uh, right right here where that little square hole is let me zoom you back in I used one of Gabe's swabs to sort of get the paint out uh, that's where these little swabs are really really handy yeah okay thanks for watching everybody and all being well <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>